Hello and welcome to this Tease in News. My name is Neil, and the topic which we are going to discuss has been necessitated by a report which has been released by United Nations Environmental Programme, and that report has pointed out that the fossil fuel production is not in sync with the Paris targets which were set under the Paris Agreement way back in 2015, and that presents a severe challenge before us. The form of our discussion would be: we will discuss the news. We will discuss the production gap report which has been released by United Nations Environmental Programme. In 2021, we will discuss the highlights. We will discuss how it is not in sync with the Paris climate change targets. We will discuss the targets which have been given by this report as the need of the hour. We will discuss the concerns that have been raised by this report. We will discuss the way forward and then you will have a question to practice your answer writing on. Let us move ahead. The news was that several countries' fo fossil fuel production it is out of sync with the limits that were thought to be imposed after the Paris Climate Deal had imposed certain targets. What were the targets? We will discuss. But the idea was that we have to reduce the production of fossil fuels in sync with the targets which we want to achieve. At the same time, the production has increased. And this is the production gap which the uh, report has referred to in its production gap report. So, the production gap report has been released by United Nations Environmental Programme in uh, coordination with, in collaboration with several agencies. Not all of these agencies are very important from exam perspective except for the Stockholm Environmental Institute. This is the primarily collaborator with United Nations Environmental Programme, but IISD, ODI, E3G, and E3G, which is a uh, European environmental organization, they all have collaborated in formation of this report. Anyhow, United Nations, along with several research institutes, releases this report. The first report was released in 2019. An un unfortunate thing is that the first report also raised similar kind of concerns uh, that have been raised in the production gap report. Also, if you remember, UNEP uh, releases several reports like adaptation gap report, right? Then there is one emissions gap report. All of these reports point out towards the gap. For example, emissions gap report points out towards the gap which is in the emissions which were targeted as per the 2015 Paris Agreement vis-a-vis -vis the emissions which we are doing right now or we are going to do in the future. So, that gap is called emissions gap. Similarly, adaptation gap, the adaptive measures which we need to take vis-a-vis -vis which we are taking right now. So, there is a still a gap. So, several gaps are pointed towards in the form of or in the form of recommendations of these reports. This particular report was launched in 2019 and it tracks how governments across the world are supporting fossil fuel production by means of their policies, investments and several other measures. It measures the gap, the production gap. The gap between government's planned production of coal, oil and gas, that is the fossil fuels and the global production levels consistent with meeting the Paris Agreement temperature limits. Also, an important thing is that it profiles 15 major fossil fuel producer countries, which are they? They are Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, Germany, importantly India, Indonesia, Mexico, Norway, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South America, the UAE, the UK and the US. And the report says just most of these countries are going to continue the support to fossil fuel production growth. Now, what are the other highlights? Based on the publicly accessible plans, the report says that the production gap has largely remained unchanged since 2019. Basically, the global oil and gas production has increased and there has been only a slight reduction, a very modest reduction in the coal production. Also, overall, the fossil fuel production is going to increase at least till 2040. In 2015, governments across the world promised that we are going to reduce the fossil fuel production, the emissions, but this report points out towards a reality that till 2040, we are going to increase the fossil fuel production and by 2030, this increase will actually peak. It will reach the double 
the production which we are doing right now. So, that is the another prediction by this report. Also, uh, the report says that this scenario is creating an ever widening production gap which will be more difficult to fill. Moving further, how it is not in sync with Paris climate change targets? So, remember we had signed along with several countries Paris Agreement in 2015 in COP21. What is COP? Remember, first we need to know what is UNFCC, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, CCC. It was, this convention was established in 1992, Rio de Janeiro Summit, also referred to as Earth Summit. Thereafter, from 1995, countries decided that we will sit together annually each time to discuss how to mitigate the climate changes which are happening. Since then, COP1, it happened in Germany. And since then, COPs have been happening. In 21st COP, the Paris COP, Conference of Parties, Paris Agreement was reached. We are going to have COP26 soon. That is why also this report acquires special significance. Uh, this COP26 is going to be held at Glasgow in uh, Scotland. So, this is the context. So, anyhow, in 2015, we signed the Paris Agreement. What was the agreement? That we wanted to achieve a long-term temperature goal. And what was that goal? To limit global warming well below 2 degrees Celsius. And there was an ambitious element to it. Preferably limited to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. But the report points out that the current plans will lead to about 240% more coal production, 57% more oil and 71% more gas, basically methane uh, production in 2030 than would be consistent to meeting the 1.5 degree targets. So, we set the target but we are not doing enough to achieve those targets. Also, governments are planning to produce around 110% more fossil fuels, almost doubling their production in 2030 till 2030. The global gas output is projected to increase the most also because comparatively, relatively gas is considered to be a better form of fossil fuel. Still, it is a fossil fuel. So, the gas production is also going to increase and all of it, what it reflects? It reflects the inconsistency of the long-term global expansion trend vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Paris Agreement. Moving further, what is the need of the R? What the report says we should do? The report says that immediate the global coal, oil and gas production should start declining to be, to allow us to be, to allow us to limit the global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade. Also, there is a requirement to switch the funding from coal to renewables such as solar energy. Also, nations, especially the 15 nations we discussed which produce uh, fossil fuels on a larger scale, they must recognize their role and responsibility that their role and responsibility is not only towards their own energy security but it is also related to global climate change. Also, rapid and immediate steps need to be taken to close the fossil fuel production gap which we just discussed is on a widening trajectory. Also, there is a need to recognize the rapid reduction in fossil fuel production that the climate change mitigation uh, targets would require. Moving on further, other concerns that have been raised by this report is that there is still a long way to go to achieve the clean energy future which we want to achieve for which we have decades of commitment and for which we have COPs, UNFCC and a plethora of other bodies. There is also going to be devastating impacts of climate change. This report has pointed out, so many other reports have pointed out and recently in news we saw that the October saw very unnatural or uh, infrequent kind of climate events, heavy rainfalls were seen and this is not a phenomena which is located, which is seen only in India, it is being seen across the world. So, the devastating impacts of climate change should be internalized in the psyche of the governments as well as of the people. Of the people. Also, this report has pointed out that still after so much noise that has been made over the uh, funding that should be provided to renewable energy, 
300 billion dollar new funds still go toward fossil fuel activities and which is relatively much higher amount than what goes towards renewable energy so and this is also a concern that has been pointed out in the report now what is the way forward one g20 nations which have the economic might as well as the international public finance uh, holding bodies like world bank imf other multilateral agencies they should significantly try to reduce the fossil fuel production in these recent years in the contemporary period how they can do so because one they have economic might two they have the power they have that bandwidth in which they can motivate countries to shift towards better ways of uh, getting energy also it requires the governments to be far more transparent in their plans and projections this transparency is also very important because if governments are not transparent such reports can't do much because even such reports rely on the reports by the governments and the agencies so governments need to be far more transparent in their plans and projections regarding their usage of fossil fuels as well as of renewable energy also investors and state owned fossil fuel companies should be mandated to disclose the effects their projects are going to cause not only to the environment but also to the immediate population so that even the democratic pressure can be built on the governments as well as on the investors to take their hands back from those projects also there is a need to follow the giant plans the giant promises with concrete steps and fossil fuel exclusion policies so as we discussed there is going to be cop26 in november 2021 we hope that there the parties will reach certain kinds of agreement maybe legally binding or at least having a moral framework to enable a shift from fossil fuel to renewables in a better phased manner based on all this discussion you have a question in the light of production gap reports remember these reports are being released since 2019 in the light of production gap reports discuss the challenges in the way to achieve the climate goals mentioned in paris agreement think over this question practice your answer writing on we'll see you in next episode